Welcome everyone, I am the Data Lord, and today we're going to be opening up the Behringer Neutron. It's a paraphonic synthesizer by Behringer, it's meant to be uh, a very modular style synthesizer. And unlike Behringer's other synthesizers, the Neutron's unique, it, it, it really is its own beast. It's not trying to be inspired by an 808 or a 909 or Roland Juno, it's its own synthesizer. And where those clones are really, really cool and offer a whole lot of value. It's nice to see that Behringer's committed to the synth industry a little bit more than just creating copycats. They're actually looking to innovate and contribute. So uh, I want to thank Behringer for all their hard work and I'd like to see a lot more of these synthesizers coming out. We're going to go ahead and start unboxing it and see what kind of sounds we can get out of it. This here is the Neutron box. paraphonic analog and semi-modular synthesizer with dual 3340 VCOs, multi-mode VCF, two ADSRs, BBD delay and overdrive circuit in a Eurorack format. So these do fit in a Eurorack styled mount. Something I notice off the bat is just this red really pops. It looks really really slick. Um, we do have some wood side panels. The uh, DeepMind 12, which I have over there, it also has wood side panels, so it's nice to see um, a bit of that classic look. Uh, you can see it's held by four screws on both sides. The back here, we have there we go. So we have a MIDI in. Technically it's MIDI through, so we can do both. We can use these dip switches here to select the channel the MIDI is going to be connected to. You have a USB, we'll find out what all that's capable of doing in a moment here. We have our min and max output, so you can set the gain stage level of the machine itself. Um, there is a boot button that I'm sure is for uh, firmware modification. Input, output, phones, and power little power switch feels good. Now, let's get into all the sections on this synth because it really has a lot of a lot of uh, knobs and things in their patch panel. So, um, this octave knob right here is to tune this first oscillator and this one right here is to tune the second oscillator. Um, we have an os mix so we're able to mix between uh, what percentage of our sound is going to be this oscillator over this oscillator. Um, the range button here will select whether we're in a low, mid, or high um, octave and we can select from these various waveforms. What's nice is it doesn't click, it's really smooth so we can actually morph from a um, we can morph from a square uh, into a pulse width modulation, into uh, a sawtooth, a triangle wave, and a sine wave. You can do that for either oscillator totally independent, which I find to be really nice. Now these these width, I don't know what they'll do. We'll get into that when we start playing with it. Um, now right here is our voltage controlled filter, VCF. Uh, envelope depth controls how much of the envelope is being applied to our filter. Um, the mod depth is how much the modulation uh, is applying to the filter and I presume that's for LFOs for example. And then we have a nice resonance and a nice frequency cutoff. Uh, this LFO right here is the uh, LFO that we can patch in from on this side over here. We do have some effects on here. We have delays, which we can affect. Uh, repeat is also feedback. It's it's how long the sound will be playing after it first goes in. The time is how quickly it takes until the delay has a slap back. And then the mix is wet dry. How much do you want to hear the delay in the in the dry sound? Um, the overdrive drives how hard you want to push the signal that's already going in. Tone 
is how much grit you want on the sound and this level knob right here uh, controls how loud the sound is after it's been processed by these two drive and tone. The output right here is how loud we want it to be outputting on the back. Uh, there's a nice MIDI in on the front so we can uh, if this were modular in our Euro rack we could easily patch uh, a MIDI in from the front. Uh, we do have sample and hold which I'm interested in starting to play with. I love those effects. Get some nice uh, glitchy sounds. The slew rate limiter, uh, I presume it's a limiter, but we'll get a play with it and find out exactly. Attenuators, uh, I did see some people who did some uh, reviews on this synth already, and they use these in uh, really intelligent ways. The attenuator lets you basically uh, control the depth, essentially, the envelope amount, essentially, uh, for any uh, input. So, quite handy. We simply have to have the uh, input of the attenuator be an output of whatever source we want, and we can control the amount using the attenuation. So, uh, that's my quick run-through and first impressions before hearing the unit, let's get into actually uh, connecting it and listening to some sounds. Right here we have output, as long as you have a quarter inch coming out of output, um, you should have audio coming into your audio device. Um, make sure you gain stages up on that, make sure that uh, you're able to hear the audio, try some other audio devices into your interface or uh, mixer or speakers, whatever, to, to make sure that's putting out the sound you want. And if it is, then uh, you know you just have a setting in here. I personally found this VCA bias right here. Um, this was all the way up, and I was running into this issue where it, um, it was always playing a note, and I couldn't figure out if these envelopes here were applying directly to the uh, amplitude and the envelope for the filter. And I, I played with it enough and, and found if I turned this all the way down, then this is the amplitude envelope and this is the uh, filter envelope. So uh, work that out. So now we have a patch program. To keep in mind too, um, this volume right here. If this isn't up, you may not hear sound. If drive isn't up and level isn't up, you may not hear sound. So make sure VCA bias is turned down all the way. Make sure your attacks are turned down all the way. Decays are turned up all the way. Uh, drives turned up all the way. Levels turned up all the way. Volumes turned up all the way. And the volume on the back is turned up. As long as all those things are set, you may want to try out your filter as well. You should you should find audio. You should start hearing something. So try those things if you're stuck at all. But uh, I'm gonna get, as the uh, English and Aussie say, stuck in. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and start this uh, performance that I have. It's just a pattern and I am going to tweak some knobs and kind of show you uh, the sound that I have here.
is my first patch. Uh, the this main thing that gets this that gets this kind of uh, metallic sound is this second oscillator here. I have it on square and uh, up to pulse width. And I do have it up on the seventh, I believe. So uh, root one, two, three, four. Where is the fourth? Um, you can hear that the delay on this really sounds quite good. Um, it does give you the ability to. Uh, make this two oscillator synth sound a whole lot uh, bigger than it would be without. Uh, I think that's one of the benefits and one of the tricks to kind of getting this synth to sound like a whole lot more than what you have under the hood. Uh, those clever tricks to kind of stretch your original audio are quite helpful. Um, I don't currently have any reverb running out of this. Um, or having this run into it, but uh, you certainly can. Uh, I will be doing plenty of experiments with that. Um, personally, I have reverb on my Ampeg mixer. Um, I know I have reverbs on my Line 6 Pod HD 500, um, and I also have plenty of VSTs that can do reverb, but I don't have any uh, dedicated reverb boxes, like a you know, guitar pedal. So I, I, I may look into to getting some outboard effects, but at the moment, uh, I don't have them. But as for the Neutron, um, I think the drive is something worth playing with. Because you can get a very different sound depending on what you're doing with the drive. It's really too quiet without the drive up, so it gets quite beefy when you include the drive on. And then uh, this tone, if you want more uh, crispy highs, if you turn that up, so I'll turn it down and I'll sweep through it. It gets pretty crispy. It really brings up the highs, which you'd expect of a tone knob. It kind of reminds me of what the uh, Ibanez Screamer does. So, uh, similar behavior. Uh, I currently don't really have a whole lot of modulations going on, and I know that's the big strong suit for the synth. So, uh, I will try to make something that uses a whole bunch of patch cables and see if I can't get a uh, very interesting, highly modulated. Uh, sound that you'd expect to hear out of a modular. Uh, let's see here. So, I have had this Neutron for two days now. I've been playing with it and kind of exploring how it behaves and I have a good idea for how to actually demonstrate it now. I have to say the, the filters and the oscillators are really, really nice. I think that the synthesizer has great potential. And uh, I, I know at the moment there, there's so many possibilities for stacking routing over here that I haven't really dove into uh, beyond just mapping things to the attenuators and being able to control the, the amount of signal going into uh, other values. So uh, we'll, we'll keep exploring that, but the first thing I wanted to go over with this Neutron is just basic usage. And I, I know that it's really capable of making some nice drum sounds, so I am going to have a video um, right after this video showing just general usage that goes over how to uh, make drums on the Neutron, but the first thing I wanted to do was show you how I'm currently setting it up 
in FL Studio and with the rest of my hardware. So um, I do have a, um, I have a, a Yamaha S80. Um, I'll show you in a second here. So I have a Yamaha S80 there. And then I have that going directly into the, the MIDI in on my Neutron. Um, I do have a DeepMind 12 there, and I have a Korg Electribe ER1 and an Ampeg um, SR6 uh, mixer. The mixer I currently don't have set up in this mix, but I really like it because it has a plate reverb in it. And then I have this APC40 that I use for uh, controlling um, things within FL Studio. And then right over here, I have FL Studio. So uh, that is my setup. I, I do have the USB for this Neutron and the USB for the DeepMind, both going into my computer. Um, so first off, let's go ahead and set up the the MIDI routing for the Neutron in our dock. Because with hardware, it, it's nice to have it integrated properly with your software. That way, you can kind of get the best of both worlds if you want to move into more of a, a totally hardware workflow. You sure can. It's no problem. If you want to kind of get away from the hardware and really just focus on tuning things uh, in your software, you want to be able to switch that mode too. So I currently have the dip switches back here. I'll push down. So one, two, three, four. It's the switches are all pushed towards the one two three four, which means that it's on uh, MIDI channel one, and where it's on MIDI channel one, I have it set to port sixteen in my software. So uh, let's go ahead and get back over to FL Studio and start looking at how that's set up. Uh, so in here. Uh, I go to options and I go to MIDI settings. Okay. And you want to go ahead and click on the input. So the, the neutron, you want to click on the input for the neutron and make sure that it's turned on here. And you can set the port number that you want it to be controlled by. So uh, I like to have my neutron on 16. So over here on output, we want FL Studio to output MIDI to the Neutron over port 16. Uh, and then, you know, for my DeepMind, I like to have that one on port 15, uh, just like that. And if you want FL Studio to send the master clock to your devices, you click on send master sync. And then FL Studio will control the clock on both the Neutron and the DeepMind. So uh, I have send the master sync 16, send the master sync 15 for the deep mind. So that's all set up. Uh, in FL Studio, we need to right click and add a MIDI out. Okay. And with MIDI out, we can then set this to port 16. And as you can see, I'm, put, I'm pushing a key on my keyboard in this light right here on the MIDI in is lighting up, which means it's receiving MIDI, but we don't have audio yet because the audio uh, isn't in my mixer. So I have uh, a quarter inch cable coming out of this um, output right here. And that output is going into my uh, input on my M-Audio uh, M-Track 2X2. And so what I'll do is on my mixer, I will uh, go ahead and click on the mixer input, and I'll select two, because that's the input that I have. And so now, if I um, send MIDI in, you hear it. So that's the Neutron's audio now coming into FL Studio. So now I'm, I'm ready to you know, be able to record MIDI, and I can tweak the, the, the knobs in the patch to sound like what I want to and record that audio for actual use. Um, so that's how I, I get started with uh, my Neutron now. Just to show you in addition how I would set up the DeepMind as well, which I'll show you that 
right here. Um, so I have the deep mind uh, set to 15. So uh, I'm going to rename this uh, MIDI out for the neutron. I'm going to name it uh, neutron. And I'm going to make another MIDI out. And this one's going to go to port 15. And uh, we'll make sure that it works. Um, we'll rename this audio input for the neutron to neutron in. And then I'll have another one for uh, deep mine 12. And for the deep mine 12, make this a little bigger. Um, for the deep mine 12, I'm going to set audio up at one. And so now uh, we can get this DM 12. So that that's the deep mine being played. Uh, now on the deep mind, I do have to go into uh, program global, and under global, um, you can go to connectivity, and you can set device ID to 15. Um, and in MIDI settings, you can set it to receive program change on RX, which is receive channel 15. So <clears throat> this is now uh, able to get MIDI from Ethel Studio, Neutron's getting MIDI from Ethel Studio. And so now let's uh, get into the Neutron. Let's see what kind of sounds we can get. And, and this is really just to give people a feel for what the Neutron's capable of. Um, we're gonna do videos just on making drums, making house basses, making um, lead sounds, uh, making you know arpeggiators, making really weird sound effects. And I will also, uh, give those sample packs for free for anyone who wants to download them and use them. Uh, you can use them as sound fonts or whatever. So let's uh, get just some MIDI going in general and then I'll start tweaking the, the Alright, so I have a patch here that I've made. Um, this routing over here is not super important. Um, it's uh, technically off and not part of the sound. So what we're going to do now is we're going to play a pattern and I have some 808 drums over it and I'm going to tweak the sound a little bit and give you a feel for uh, what this thing can sound like. So uh, we'll be doing a lot more videos going over patch design and giving out sample packs so people can uh, use these drums and, and bass and lead sounds in their own music even if they don't have a, a Neutron. Uh, and that'll be free. So let's go ahead and get this track started and we'll uh, get some grooving. Thank you. 
Yeah, this this thing is really easy to get sounds that sound uh, good. It, it just has nice oscillators to begin with, nice filters to begin with. The resonance can really be pushed, and the fact that it has an overdrive on the actual synth itself and delay on the synth itself is just very practical. So this is the first video of my Neutron series, and there will be more. I'm going to have a video just going over kicks and snares and hi-hats and synth percussion and making different bass lines and making lead sounds and atmospheres. So hope everyone will stick with me as we're going through these Neutron videos. And if you like what you see, go ahead and pick up a Neutron. I have links in the description to pick up a Neutron if you want to support this channel and also uh, join me in making some cool music with a Neutron. So. I'm the Data Lord. Hope everyone's had a good time with this video, and I'll see you next time.